Welcome to Librarian Recommends. Hi, my name is Trish and I am one of the librarians at Barbican Library. And in this video, I'm going to bring you some suggestions of ebooks to read from our e-library. You can download ebooks using our free Libby app. Simply download the app, search for City of London Libraries, enter your library membership number and away you go. Ebooks are a great way to read, especially if you're unable to get to the library or if the library is closed, as you can download them from the comfort of your own home and start reading straight away. Today's ebook suggestions are all about summer. The first suggestion is Summer of 76 by Isabel Ashdown. The story begins on New Year's Eve 1970. Married couple Joanna and Richard Wolfe are at a party hosted by their respectable friends John and Marie. Joanna is searching through a bowl of keys. Whose key fob is she looking for? Fast forward to 1976 and their son Luke is about to turn 18 and is set to enjoy his last few months at home on the Isle of Wight before leaving to study in Brighton. His summer job cleaning chalets at a holiday camp promises new friendships and even romance. This will be an unforgettable summer for Luke. As a heatwave rages, tensions in Luke's family life heighten as gossip begins to circulate about parties held by a local couple and the community is gripped by scandal. Soon everything Luke thought he knew about trust and his family is turned on its head. This is an intense novel about dark secrets and simmering passions with the complex lives of the characters unravelling as the temperatures of the heat wave intensify. It's a compelling, evocative and insightful book, a literary scorcher that's well worth a read. Next up is The Summer Theatre by the Sea by Tracy Corbett. When London-based interior designer Charlotte Saunders loses her job, boyfriend and home in the same day, she has no choice but to travel to Penmullion in Cornwall and move in with her sister Lauren while she figures out what to do next. Lauren leads a very different life to her sibling. She is a single mother of two children, struggling to make ends meet. She is also part of a local drama group, which is planning to stage a Midsummer Night's Dream at an outdoor theatre. Grateful for something to keep her busy in this quiet coastal town, Charlotte agrees to help with the set design for the play. As the days pass, Charlotte makes new friends, reconnects with her father and meets handsome amateur actor Barney, a surfer who left his medical career behind in London. Meanwhile, Lauren is under increasing pressure from the local loan shark to pay up whilst trying to ignore her attraction to kind-hearted postman Nate, who, is in, who has been in love with her for years. Can the women strengthen their relationship, learn to open up and overcome their problems to find happiness? This is an easy, entertaining read, an ideal for a summer staycation. The next suggestion is Summer Water by Sarah Moss. The story takes place over the course of the longest day of summer. The setting is a holiday park in Scotland. On the shore of a loch, 12 people and their families are confined to their cabins while the rain pours down. The rain has been falling relentlessly for days, leaving the occupants with little to do but surreptitiously observe and judge the other residents. Through the inner monologues of the various holiday makers, we learn that everyone is hiding something. As the characters reflect on their lives and relationships, they make assumptions about those around them, while never engaging with them. The only people whose thoughts we are not privy to are those viewed as outsiders by the others, an Eastern European family who have been playing loud and disruptive music every night in their cabin, and also a former soldier camping in a tent in the nearby woods. Along with the boredom and frustrations of the residents, there is a sense of foreboding. As the rain beats down, tensions rise, and the Midsummer's Day ends in a surprising and shocking turn of events. This is an intense, acutely observed and beautifully written novella. The feelings of claustrophobia and exasperation caused by enforced confinement will resonate with many post-lockdown. 
This is a captivating, unsettling and poignant read. The final suggestion is The Summer House in Santorini by Samantha Parks. When struggling photographer Anna Linton witnesses her boyfriend's infidelity, she is understandably devastated. To complicate matters, he is also her boss at the photography gallery where she works. Recently informed that she and her sister have unexpectedly inherited a summer house from their long estranged and recently deceased father, she grabs the opportunity to leave her troubles behind and travels from New York to the Greek island of Santorini to claim the property. Anna's intention is to sell it as quickly as possible, but it turns out the house needs a lot of work before it can be sold. So she spends the summer renovating it while getting to know the paternal grandparents she'd never met and learning the truth about her parents' marriage and her father's abandonment of the family when she was five. Her photography skills are in demand and she wins an award for her work. She can't help but fall in love with the picturesque island and then there is the gorgeous Nico. When an unexpected email invites her back to New York, she has to decide whether to make her triumphant return or fully commit to a new life on Santorini. This is a light-hearted, romantic story about self-discovery and starting over, set in a beautiful, sun-drenched location. The perfect novel for a bit of summer escapism. I do hope you enjoy these ideas for your next read. And don't forget, if these titles are unavailable when you look, you can search by genre or subject and availability, or simply browse in the Libby app. If you prefer to listen to audiobooks, do look out for my Librarian Recommends video on audiobooks. Please do like this video if you have enjoyed it, and share it with your friends. Your support and feedback is invaluable to us. Before I go, I would like to thank my colleague Lynn for her invaluable help putting these recommendations together. Happy reading and see you soon. Bye.